Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome to Oval Racing in Gran Turismo 7. This is something that doesn't come up a huge amount in the game, but when it does, as you can see, produces a fair amount of carnage. So please do strap yourself in for an unhealthy dose of Shadow Realm entries, just like this one. Yes, so this was a recent daily race. Daily race A on the Daytona tri over in Group 3 cars. And as you can see, no SR or DR updates. Therefore, you could punt people off without any penalties or repercussions. Beautiful stuff. So this didn't really bode well as we headed to Daytona, fast flowing, and usually very aggressive all the way to the finish line. So let's jump into race number one, starting with Scott Speed, the greatest American driver, or the greatest driver actually. No, he's just the greatest driver of all time. We've already decided that. And you know, who better to do it than him? Especially as of course, over racing, speciality of the United States of America. So we're gonna jump in with our resident American driver. For the first race, starting at the back, the real strategy here is to be part of a team. Now, the front guys, as you can see, kind of broke away into their group, and then we had our own group back here. So the only thing I can really do is bump draft the car in front, keep pushing it forward and forward and forward, and eventually we might be able to catch up with that group in the front. However, that isn't exactly what happens, because what happens is just about to happen here and it wasn't a really positive ending for Scott Speed as uh, we tried to go for a pass here there was contact and before you know it you're doing a 720 no scope I mean the crowd probably loved that but it wasn't good for my result really was it um, and here's a replay of it I'm the car that's about to appear on the right there I am and to be fair you know I kind of just heard him a little bit down below the apron and ultimately paid the price. I did manage to get one uh, position back, as you can see there, from that poor victim, before then finishing our first race in P11. And uh, that's just not good enough, really, is it? That's just, that's quite frankly awful. Um, but however awful you thought that race was, this one was just even more awful. This was, this was really stupid, this one, right? <laughs> because no matter what I did, I was, in the slipstream of the car in front, but just was not close enough. I started this one 12 out of 12. And um, all I could do really was watch as the cars in front got further and further away. And the pixels on the screen got smaller and smaller and smaller before they eventually disappeared. Uh, so there's nothing I could do on that one. So I decided to drive through my opponents. For some reason, the... Um, the stewards didn't really enjoy that so they booted me out of the lobby um, and there, there we were back in the lobby or back in the main menu once again for some reason uh, personally I thought that was fine but you know there you go it's kind of frowned upon to drive backwards at your opponents at 200 mile an hour uh, who would have who known so I'm going to try a bit of qualifying now to uh, try and start a bit further towards the front of the pack might help rather than starting 11th and 12th and then rage quitting and driving through your opponents and uh, over racing really is just about being ultra smooth ultra ultra precise i've got 51.0 on the first lap but i needed to get a 51.6 to be competitive on the grid order for the race and it's really again a case of just being ultra ultra minimal on your steering input and trying to shave off it's not even about tenths it's about hundredths or thousandths of a second on an oval eventually i got a 50.740 slightly improved to a 728 and then again slightly improved to a 714 but no matter what i did i couldn't quite get below the magical 50.7 barrier tried again I restarted the session and I got the same sort of times, very low sevens, couldn't quite break into a six. Until I exited and started again, 
And I think that there is something up with the time trials in the game. In the sense that the conditions aren't the same in all of the sessions. Now the wind speed is the same in all the sessions. As you can see it's 1.5 going um, behind me now. I've got a tailwind on this straight. But it seems as though there is something different with the ambient temperature or something like that which affects the car's performance and it's not something you can really see or notice but after doing another lap I managed to do a 50.675 and I didn't really do anything different it just seemed like the car just wanted to go quicker for some reason on that session but there we go that was enough for us to be third on the grid for the next race which actually turned out to be second once uh, someone inevitably got disconnected before the race started so here we are second position on the grid a lot further forward now the main strategy here of course well what is the strategy strategy here is it to get into the lead and try to stay there or is it to wait and stay second and then slingshot past at the, at the line i think there's many ways that you can play this but i felt like i want to command this race from the front and try to control it from the front and luckily with that slipstream, I managed to get past. Now, he didn't really, he wasn't able to reply to that quite luckily. So I got that move done for free. Because normally, it turns out, if you try to slipstream and go to the outside, you don't actually get past. So that kind of worked out on that lap because it was the first lap. But any other lap, it doesn't really seem to work. So all I have to do now, really, is uh, just stay in the lead and uh, just finish in the lead I mean that's kind of obvious really isn't it uh, just stay in the lead win the race I mean uh, I mean that's kind of the whole point but it's uh, easier said than done must be said so all I can do really is just hug the yellow line people could move to my left but they're not really meant to because it's kind of off the track I guess so I'm just going to stay here and just hope that I keep getting bump drafted now, at one point, this guy got bump drafted past me. And he got the momentum, you see that. And I just got a bump at the right moment. And got, got the position back. So that one was very close. That was very lucky, you could say. And I just about kept the lead. Uh, lap five. This one, well, it didn't quite go to plan for me here. Because everyone decided to bump the car on the outside. And as a result, I lost the lead. I lost a handful of positions. And there was... It looked like a very... I, I'm not sure if I touched this guy. But either way, ends up on the grass, coming back on the track. Losing a fair amount of momentum. And before you know it, one tiny error loses you five, six, seven positions. Very easy to do on the oval. Uh, so I find myself now in third, with two laps remaining, plotting my strategy to get into the lead once again. Now, you see uh, Key there goes to the outside... And this is an ideal scenario, really, to gain one position at least, because you can just bump draft the car in front, bump past, and then the car on the outside just can't do anything. And like an absolute fool, I put myself on the outside and hoped that the cars behind me would bump me and not the other car, but that just didn't seem to be a strategy. That didn't seem to be the way that people were racing. They would always bump the inside car, and that's fair enough. And... Um, it's really a case of, yeah, trying to get to the front and hope that no one works against you. There's lots, there's so many factors to consider with the oval racing. And uh, it was frustrating at times, especially this one. I controlled this race for the first half of the race, at least. But then here I find myself in fifth on the seventh lap. What, seventh lap of seven, that is. I've only really got maybe 20, 30 seconds now to try to get this one back. I'm going to bump draft this guy on the outside. Is this going to work? I'm going to form a line on the outside. Hope the cars behind me kind of work with me. But no, unfortunately, there was a bit of contact. And I find myself on the grass and meeting Barriar on the inside. And it seemed as though the car physics were very, very light when you had contact on the rear quarter panel there. When cars were just touching the corner of your car, rear corner, it, it seemed to make your car very, very spinny. More spins than Tony Hawk. And uh, very frustratingly, we finished that, that one in 10th. Not really good enough, is it? 
for Scott Speed, um, really not living up to standards here. Um, this is just plainly not good enough, and he needs to do better. Now here, how about this race? Lap 4 now, oh my goodness, that guy got vaporised into a whole new dimension. And uh, he is very warmly welcomed into the Shadow Realm by Satan himself, I would presume. Now here, crossing the line, I was second as we crossed the line there, but it kind of, again, kind of indicated that I, you could slipstream past and potentially nab a win on the outside line just before the end. But it wasn't to be on this occasion, because once again, I was doing my best Tony Hawk impression with, I don't even know how many spins that was, probably a 1440. Okay, so that, that race was in the bin. And um, this one, managed to find my way through a couple of positions nice and early. Starting fifth, oh my goodness, another car off onto the grass. The population of the Shadow Realm growing by the day. And you love to see it. And uh, here we go, starting this one in fifth, currently now in second, and I felt like my, my strategy, other than, oh my goodness, again, other than getting uh, punted off with the, uh, the light contact on the rear end, the strategy really was to stay in second and try to slip through and pass at the end. It didn't work there. Now I noticed the winner had a different car. Is this car the better car to use, the Spec 2 test car? Most people are using the 4GT. This is an older version of the 4GT. And I felt like, okay, let's give this car a go. Let's see what the fuss is all about with this thing. Can we use it to our advantage? Now here, I felt like, okay, let's move to the outside. Let's just try and do something a little bit different. And as we go for this, we had a little bump there. We're gonna go three abreast on the back straight. And we're gonna go from fifth to temporarily the lead. On the outside line, green car retakes the lead, and I get a nice bump, which gives me just enough clearance to move back to the inside and take second. Now, on lap six, I was in the lead here, okay? And then this happened. Car on the inside, <laughs> car goes below the yellow line, comes back on, I'm forced into the wall. And I think the term wanting to turn the console off springs to mind or wanting to throw my console off a bridge into a river springs to mind. Uh, so what I felt like doing was painting my car bright luminous orange to make sure that everyone could see that I was there. There was no excuses now. Now this one mm, was a questionable overtake by myself and <laughs> felt like doing a bit of lawn mowing on the inside. That one didn't work. How about this one? Find myself in the lead once again. Now watch the radar here. Car on the outside. Just, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness yeah i'm definitely going to unplug the console now and uh, throw it off the largest bridge in my local area and then go down pick it up and throw it off again how about this race i sound like a broken record now really <laughs> i think shadow realm entries are very plentiful here and there's another one for you it seemed like, I'm not sure if this, I, I think this guy was doing it on purpose. I'm, I'm sure that some people were aware that the contact on the rear quarter panel with the corner of the car was just sending people to the Shadow Realm. And they were kind of doing it explicitly and deliberately. But uh, I have no actual evidence, I'm not really sure. Now there, I could have gone for the outside move, he kind of chopped over late. It would have been difficult to win. But second place was our best result to date. So things are perhaps going in the correct direction. How about this one, right? Up against Stan Halen. Now, I felt like the play was just to hang back. This is the, uh, this is the last corner. I thought I'd hang back, wait for a hit from behind, and then go for the outside line. This guy was a bit nicer with giving room. And you can see here, it was a direct drag race. I did take the lead here. For a split second before the guy uh, Stan Halen there got a bump and uh, I finished that one oh I actually finished it in second so I was so close a couple of times there two seconds in a row but second isn't good enough it has to be a win it has to be a win how about this one bit of contact on the back straight frustrating I was getting towards the front but I just could not quite get the job done and it felt as though the player who's willing 
most to get their elbows out and be a bit forceful those players tended to win this race and um, I suppose it's no surprise given that there's no DR or SR updates with this race you're kind of allowed to punt people into oblivion with zero uh, zero penalty um, now this one oh, completely unintentional I, I can swear to you but uh, we end up smashing an invisible wall there it is well you can't really see it but it's there trust me um <laughs> we're gonna move on race oh uh, god number 11 i think we've had not much luck so far so surely i'm owed some luck right now the cameraman got stuck in the concrete here then he had a bit of a wobble before emerging from said concrete to film me in race number 11 starting fourth once again in the luminous 4 gt spec car come on scott speed it's your time now mate stop messing about we've got to get that race win at long last the the stars have surely got to align now for scott speed to have that victory that's what we all want to see now here look the the mustang on the outside that's not the, that's not the place to be and it's a brave choice i suppose as well going for something that is not a 4 gt now here we go up into second we're making our way towards the front of the pack this is good news um, but what was bad news was just moments later i chose to go to the outside and it didn't quite work out as you can see cars passing us we're getting bump drafted though it's a nice little battle for p2 but i'm on the outside there's not much i can do here bit of bit of contact there as uh, rage quit goes past very prop um very aptly named i go past rage quit it really is a race between me and rage quitting because i don't want to rage quit but i think it's about to happen because here we have another bit of contact and when you're looking at your opponent's side on on the oval you know that something has gone drastically wrong that's exactly what i found myself looking at right here before then doing another spin that Tony Hawk will be proud of and meeting Barry R for the 4,942nd time this day. Not a very successful day. Bringing the car home, P12 of 12. Really just not good enough for Scott Speed and his fans. I really began to question, is Scott Speed good enough? Is he actually the GOAT? Because on this evidence, he isn't. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.